Please welcome back Robert Klein. Hey, we're back. On my left and on my right are sitting two gentlemen from uh, a very, very famous, world-famous rock band, as you know, Aerosmith, which is an American band, not yeah, some yeah, foreign. Yeah. Look, I have nothing to say about it, but uh, will you welcome Steve Tyler and Tom Hamilton? Steve, Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Thank you. Welcome, Thank you sir. kindly, thank you kindly. Steve, Tom, say hello. Thank you, Robert. Okay. Hello. In a fair fight, let's get to it. Could you beat up the Rolling Stones or any other English? <laughs> right off the bat. Right I mean, like, you know, a little American know-how. Uh, you know, they don't use their hands in sports. Soccer, they kick balls. No, they're, they're frail. <laughs> they're frail, too. But that is funny. a new album right in the nuts. No, a doubt. Do you ever think of it in national terms, the fact that uh, your main... The, the, the other bands most clo closely associated with your style are English, in a I way. Think back in the beginning, we wanted to become the first American band to do the same kind of high-class R&B as the English were doing at the time. High-class R&B? Yeah, um, R&B with, with something extra, versions. with more balls. Um, back in, in those I'm days... I'm not sure you I can say extra on radio, can you? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah, actually, about the go ahead, I'm sorry, man. I think you so, can. Go ahead. So we were conscious of that when we started out. Yeah. But now, not really, huh? Not at all. They didn't take you very seriously, though, when you first came out. The... Not at all again. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so now that they are, and you're being played on all these stations, like all these stations that carry our show, these highfalutin, cream of the crop kind of hip More chins than the Chinese stations. telephone book type stations. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> Wait a minute. More chins than the Chinese telephone. We may have Over hit... The head. We may have hit, hit a chin ground. in the armor here. What do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. So you feel like a little like, uh, you, you, now you like us, but then you're not particularly forgiving of all this, right? Oh, no, you brought it up. Oh, well, I'm asking you. <laughs> you speak, speak candidly. I'm asking honestly about it. Now, that, does it not matter? down in the beginning and how it is now. Yeah, like, for example, no, everybody in their career then. has bugaboos. People that, Greg Garrison, who produced, you know, really handy television work like the Dean Martin show for years and the Gold Diggers, uh, he wouldn't put me on the Dean Martin show after they had booked me, you know, didn't think I was good enough and funny enough and all this. And years later now, I'm not his friend or anything, but it doesn't matter to me. Mm. Does it matter to you anymore that they... No, you know, it really doesn't. I mean, I, you know, it doesn't matter to me that that pig is still working in this business. <laughs> really? You know what I mean? You know, putting out the... Everything I it's say probably because of the way anyway. you moved your hips. <clears throat> well, what do you think? I, mean, I think they all sucked back then, yeah, without a doubt. And how about now? They still suck. <laughs> but they're better at it. <laughs> this well, might be history, ladies and genitals. Well, in the sense that, listen to me, going through head there. In terms of the, I think I'm on PBS here. Actually, it was good for the band that, that it worked out that way because it, uh, the only alternative, since we weren't getting airplay and uh, interviews and press, was to go out on the road and uh, prove it ourselves to the audiences. Mm -hmm. It was pretty hard when we went out on tour with Mahavishnu Orchestra, but <laughs> and we finally went out with Mata Hoople, and that yeah. was it was a good bill, and uh, we could start building ourselves. Yeah, that kind of, that's right. There was the, the idea that there was they, they weren't playing you. You had to go out and uh, yeah. right, yeah, prove it another <clears throat> way. Um, you're you're it's a decade now of being in big time show business. Steve, you have a new baby. I sure I do. understand you're an enthusiastic father. I myself am in the market. Uh, for baby. Congratulations. Uh, um, the idea... That's more chins. Uh, what is it like this go-round going, going on the road? Uh, you're, you're an older man, if I may say so now, 10 years older than when all this started. Is, what's your approach to all that, of going out? It's all happening again. All stations are playing rock, mm -hmm. kicking ass, mm -hmm. loving it, displaying it, saying disco sucks. Yeah. Hey. Wait a you can't, say, you, you you can't say disco on the radio. <clears throat> Uh, really? <laughs> no, but uh, what I mean is your personal feeling about going out on the road. Now you have a, a, a child, and you're older, it's tough. and you're Come established. On, well, that's what I'm. <laughs> I spent a good deal of time on the road. No, I love it. We uh, we've just gone through a conversion. Um, uh, we got a new album out. Mm -hmm. It's going on two million now. In the ruts. Night in the ruts. Night in the ruts. It's going on two million sales. Uh, the band is kicking ass more than ever before. Uh -huh. uh, I've kids are getting two. older, kids are getting younger in the audience. I'm getting older, I'm getting younger. Mm-hmm. What? You know, rock and roll is back again. 
Here, here. I thought you were going to say that. Yes. Well, I don't here, think it ever here. left. But I thought you were going to say rock and roll is back again, rock and roll is not back again, because you kept on reversing everything <laughs> you said. Oh, no. You sound like Catherine Deneuve in that commercial. I like a man who's short yet tall, <laughs> Long quiet yet noisy, handsome yet ugly. You know, she doesn't know what she wants. Oh, no, I know what I want. Oh. I what do you what want? I want. I want to get fucking laid right now. Oh, you're joking. Indeed. What do you want? Uh, survive the next 15 minutes <laughs> with my head above my Well, I want many things, uh, you know, but I, I, what I'm interested in now that the struggle was a decade ago and now uh, it's a new ball game. See, I, I have met a number of people on this show who are successful musicians and so forth and they're sort of around my age, kind of, or a little, and how they feel about it as opposed to when, how they used to feel about it, going on the road, getting on the stage, performing. What about this violence thing that happened in Philadelphia, kind of ugly, two incidents, uh, where you hit with a bottle, I think. Uh, Somebody wrapped a couple M80s together and chucked them up at me and Joe, that's all. What's an M80? Firecracker of sorts. Oh. An eighth of a stick of dynamite. Something, something like, like that. that. <laughs> just about took my... It makes a loud yeah, no, popping off. noise. Uh, just some... Uh, Asshole. Yeah. Took. Uh, well, how do you know? Maybe they came because, from a difficult home. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> no, I'm Without a doubt. Yeah. Vaginal yeast infection from the pool, no doubt. You, you, you had a. Uh, someone chucked. Someone yeah. chucked it up on stage. We were doing an encore, so we walked up on stage. Yeah. And uh, people are chucking stuff all the time to see if they can hit them. You know? Yeah. It's their way of showing their yeah. love for us, and well, being that, part of the show. So, so uh, it just happened to go off right here, I remember. And it blew a hole in Joe's finger, in his, the back of his hand. Yeah. Blood went... Psh, psh, and I, thought, I thought he'd gotten shot. Yeah. Because it was such a... Psh, right. Right in front of us. Um, I, you know... And also, there was a bottle incident, wasn't there? Yeah, last time we went there... Some That's the one where we... Why in we that same town, the city of the, brotherly uh, love? Mo uh, most likely because we came back again for a second time. Well, why is there no, something it's about enthusiasm? It's just—it's really enthusiasm. That's their way. It's, I think, a way Very of striking. <clears throat> if they can touch yeah. us somehow by, with a bottle or a football yeah. or or whatever, mm -hmm. they become part of the show. Hmm. I don't they quite understand that, but I'll buy it. Part of the end. I don't understand it either. But that's what—that's. Well, is there when, something when in you your get performances hit in the face with something? You know the person. Let me ask you this: <clears throat> I see several people right in this room, poised with things ready to throw. Is there something about you guys? I have eyes in the Is there something about you guys? And... I didn't tell you to do that. Do you recall that night if at any time you said, Come on, throw a firecracker! Did you ever actually request a firecracker? Or maybe you could... I remember one time... Uh, when Did we you played... ask for a beer, maybe? No, one time we played Pine Knob. <laughs> a Pine Knob in, uh, in uh, Michigan, I think. They were throwing uh, beer cans onto the stage, and Stephen said, Well, at least throw full ones. <laughs> so the next thing we knew, there was five or ten spinning full beer cans. Flying all over the yeah, well, I think you should know better than to suggest such a thing. Well, no, we it just was, dive it, for the it stage. Was a, it, was, it was fate, you know. Like, like hell, we'll go back there again. You know, it's ridiculous. It's just uh, the way it is, you know. <clears throat> Would you have thrown something if you were in the audience and they were Aerosmith? Positively, without a doubt. I think you're not kidding, in a way. You know. I wish I could see us sometime. Yeah. I thought I said that too. I'd like I to see I me in this Broadway show. my place last night. You said you were in the pool. I was shooting something, yes. So we're shooting, shooting. that's one, what, what, you know. Is it the heroin or the cocaine, Robert? Uh, I've never done that at our concerts. This was, drug, no one does drugs at your concerts, do no, they? No, shooting. Never. <laughs> do you, uh, Absolutely. hey, come on, wait a minute. Drugs? Uh, at your concerts? Well, what about that? I mean, uh. Why don't we call our album booth? A few cigarettes. Wait a minute, I want to hear more about this. Just, uh, don't go away here. We'll be right back after this word. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, we're back, and we're speaking to Steve Tyler and Tom Hamilton from Aerosmith. And uh, the new album is Night in the Ruts, uh, taken in a cave, right? Uh, you look like coal miners. And the other side, is, it says right in the nuts, which is a play on that Absolutely. sentence, right? The, uh, that, that cover was originally shot for the single that Richie Super wrote for me called uh, Chip Away the Stone. And we were in L.A. at the time. And uh, there's an agency out there that shoots you for six grand. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, send your secretaries out, look up the 1921s, get all the old suits and costumes. So they got us a whole truckload full of crap and stuff. And um, you shot it at Griffith Park. You know where that is, don't you? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> hey. 
Hang on. Yeah. Well, being I'll tell you about Parks. Mm-hmm. I'll play. You want to play esoteric Parks? There's been more. Morrison Park in Chicago. How about yeah. that one? Mm-hmm. Well. There's been more Star Treks in, uh, and even going back to Buck Rogers that was filmed at this particular. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a hill. Yeah. It must be 100 feet high. And it's a cave all the way through it. And then there's a T trench. Oh, and those old uh, science right. fiction ones where they had a, a mop yeah. pails for, for helmets. Everyone tells Otto yeah. that we will not go to his planet. You know, the broomsticks. Exactly. So. All right. of them. Very all bad technical stuff. Ever since we've shot there, we've seen, we've noticed. Hey, you were uh, uh, Sergeant Pepper. You were in that movie. George right. Martin is here today mm-hmm. with us. And I know you all were talking before the program. I mean, that was a real, uh, a very big thing in your, in the Aerosmith career, isn't it? Because you came out great in that movie. Yeah, we did. Right? Yep. What, did it mean something at this age? Yeah. Even more legitimacy? Yeah, we do the song for an encore. Yeah. yeah. Positively. Yeah. They gave us a chance song. to test ourselves out as far as what we could do in a film. The, the uh, length of the segment was just right. You want to do that again? Song. If uh, the right thing came along and maybe if George Martin was uh, supervising the musical production... As long as the kid don't, don't die. <sighs> Your kid? The kid don't die. You? <laughs> <laughs> You have a kid named Mia. Yes, sir. There's a song on the album, Mia. <clears throat> you sentimental guy. You know that uh, people see that you're too vulnerable. They'll start throwing things on the stage. Yes, uh, but how do you know I'm singing about her? I assumed. You no. Know? Uh uh-uh. uh. Am I? <laughs> I one more time. <laughs> Suddenly, I was in another world. He was not <laughs> singing about her. He was singing about someone else. Sing. You're also a teen idol. Tom, how do you feel about Steve being a teen idol? I think it's great. Really? It helps my income. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, pragmatic yeah. answer. I get to be one sometimes, too. Really? A lot. Hey, I know. Really, a Listen, lot. Plenty of teens like him, but not probably as much as him, though. Anyway, I uh, <laughs> want to score some competition here. I can't, that's the f- a thing I find it hard to relate to. When people are fans of me, usually they may be a little older. I don't know. I mean, what is it like to look at an 11-year-old girl in the eyes who is madly in love with you? Was it like Just to like look now. in her eyes? Uh-huh. Uh, that's <laughs> what it feels like. 11 plus 50. 11 plus 50. What is it like? Never mind. No smell. <laughs> Never mind. <You> print it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I just, uh, no, I, uh... And why did I... No, I'm not, uh... <laughs> I'm not asking any questions that were prepared from your press kit or anything like that, you know. We won't find any. No, they, you know, the press kit is... is uh, Errol? Replete with... Mm-hmm. No, it's replete with things to ask questions about, you know, but I wasn't interested uh, in that. It's just you're human beings. You've got personalities. You're nice people. Well, all right. Thank you kindly. Thank well, you. You, uh, you know. Why don't you ask about last night? Yeah. Were you last there? night you were at the Nassau Coliseum. Uh... They had to play during a hockey game. It had been booked, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> it made it very, very difficult, you know. I sing in the middle of their number, and uh, uh, it was a little messy there and cold. But uh, once the hockey game, during halftime especially, you guys really did well. We got a chance to play a couple of good numbers, yes. Yeah, between the second and third period particularly. Right. Now, what is that like? It's not exactly uh, intimate, but it's exciting, huh? Yeah, 19,000. 19,000. 19, uh-huh. We did an extra 1,000 last night, I think. Obstructed view tickets, they're called. Really? Mm. Yeah. Behind the stage. <clears throat> the kids are like this. Obstructed view. That means they're in Yonkers. They're the ones that just run down to the front and throw <laughs> bottles and fireworks. Do I remember me? Oh. Well, they were reserved seats, though. Yeah. They were well-behaved. Oh, positively, no yeah. bottles. But the people yeah. backstage. Yeah. I spent half the night on a drum riser. They were all just slobs. Really? Unbelievable. They drank all our beer, stole our T-shirts. Really? Yeah. Stole your T-shirts and drank your beer? Yeah. It really pisses me off, Tim. Yeah. Why don't they... I wish they lived in Saudi Arabia. Cut off their hands. <laughs> yeah. You know what you get for stealing a T-shirt in Saudi Arabia? Cut off Five your hands. Skins. <laughs> no, they do that over in Israel. Failure to Steven. make a left turn signal. <laughs> Cut off right. your hand. <laughs> Murder, you can't watch TV three nights. It's backwards there. That's no punishment at all. Listen, I want to bring on George and have you have a tearful... Re- be like, this is your life. George... We'll have his voice first. Boys, do you remember this voice? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Let's take it again. <laughs> and then we'll bring him on, you know? Hey, you're talking uh-huh. to One Take Charlie. One Take Charlie. Oh, really? Without we'll talk about that and more. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> 